Welcome to this technical overview of the SAP Design Studio Dashboard Financial Performance. My name is Ivor van der Zand, SAP Analytics. So this is the final result of the uh, Financial Performance Dashboard with uh, drop-down boxes, KPI tiles, um, and it's a five-pager, uh, so it's a page book as a core. Um, and you can scroll through the applications using the little um, buttons over there. Very important setting up the dashboard are of course the data sources, which you can tick and um, uh, go to the initial view, which you see over here of this list. Um, I have quite some records in here. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, month for two metrics. Um, and basically you set the data sources according to your needs in your analysis. Yeah? So if you are looking for an analysis with various metrics and uh, maybe using more than one nested dimension, you set it up as such in the initial, initial view of the data source. So I have around uh, 20 data sources um, going to various instances. Here you see the core framework structure. So I have a, um, an uh, image background. Of course, I have a header section on top, which is the financial performance dashboard indicator, a filter section where I put in all my filters and click buttons. Over here you see the um, code needed to uh, export to Lumira that is linked to a specific data source. And this is the code needed to print the application application in VCWIC format. So that is the filter section. Then you see the body section where I have uh, my page book and uh, part of the page book are the five different pages that I give you an overview from right now. Um, so there's a page that I called scorecard where you find the scorecard for example we just saw the KPI and the heat map page, page. I did some geo already but I will come back on geo more extensively in the next video and I have a page uh, which focuses on a radio group button section um, this is important when you saw in the movie already the uh, what's happening uh, when you tick the drop down boxes so first of all over here you see the binding property uh, on the PL drop down box where you define your sources as you can see on top and you define the target data sources where the filter needs to apply to and of course you have the dimension that you use um, for your filtering it is very easily done and again no coding at all the um, other drop-down box um, which you see a demonstration from over here is a little bit more complex because it also affects the color of the arrows and the direction of the arrows and there is a second um, influence that is to the border color of the tiles yeah, so um, the arrows uh, are affected by another trend in the matrix than the border color is affected and that is done uh, also via a script um, that puts on the panels on and off if we deep dive over there a little bit over here you see the section with the different tiles and you see that I use a little trick that I use the panel three times the by default the white one that you see on the screen right now and I activate a wet or a green one depending on what I need and uh, on the result of a certain if then else um, indicator on the drop box. The same goes by the way for the arrows. I put one uh, per default. This is the script, the more complexer script where I use variables and if then else statements to based on the selection in the drop down box apply the arrows or either the color coded panels on the background over here you see what happens if you click a tile that's an on click event uh, where i activate a uh, a next body chart uh, that's the name it's a graph uh, that opens up um, when you click the certain tile it's an on click event and over here you can see um, a step next to that is what you need to do if you click the left graph 
to apply a filter on the right one. So if you click the left one, you basically use the filter to set the filter for the source of the white one. Over here you can see it. Clicking means that I set DS4, that is the white graph, the source of the white graph. I set the filter to the white graph. And this is how you can create interactivity between two charts. Over here you see the uh, uh, highlight of the Z visible command. So where I say if the user taps the KPI tile, I want these panels to be activated. Um, part of the panels are the charts that I always assign to a panel and I just activate the set visible um, and uh, set visible false indicators for the panels. This is an example of what I did with the cross tab. If you take the middle tile over there, it's important that you uh, apply the conditional formatting. It's based on the smart copy functionality of analysis for office. Over here, the result, if I click a certain bar, then it affects the chart on the right hand side. Over here, if I tick the middle KPI tile, you see that I, uh, it affects the cross tab that was constructed in Analysis for Office. Okay, going back to the Design Studio application. Yeah, again over here, what I do clicking on a tile, uh, I use an on-click event. And this is the code I use to uh, activate and deactivate the accompanying panels with the um, uh, charts embedded. This is an uh, uh, in-chart wheel. So over here on the pie, if you click, it goes to a level uh, below. I will discuss that the next time. Again, over here, you see that the pie, clicking the pie also affects the heat map on your right hand side. So the uh, in-chart drill is done uh, using various levels. I come back in that in a uh, next video. Um, and over here, I uh, have a little button that uh, puts the level back to the top, um, uh, the top weight uh, to go to the initial state. One of the things I use is dynamic text, uh, typically based on a uh, specific metric. Um, you have seen in the accompanying text on this website that uh, dynamic text is also uh, related to a filter binding on the text column. This is the properties of the scorecard component. The scorecard component is very powerful. It's a bit more work to apply because you basically need to set every individual setting for every individual column, but it gives you a very comprehensive overview of your data. Um, you go in the um, in the uh, additional properties of the scorecard to set it all up. And of course you start with a decent source um, as data using more than one dimension in my case to um, regulate the elements. Again, in example over here of the set visible command, I come back to that quite often because I believe it's quite a powerful element to use. This is the radio group button selection. And again, uh, the radio group is based on filter binding, which you see over here. You just select the source and the targets. There is no coding at all anymore. So you select for source your source data sources and for target your target data sources. And then when you the user select, you can easily apply the filter to the sources and those sources are again linked to um, the charts that you want to be affected. Quite often I also use uh, charts within a tile. Um, I think that better clarifies. Uh, I would advise you to um, delete all legends and uh, access and stuff like that. If you do a little chart that is part of a tile just to uh, make it easier readable 
for the end user. Um, and I think I over here we are going up um, showing you the result what happens if you use extensive use of the set visible command with panels if I um, tick the um, lower panel it activates a bigger one with a, the same graph and I use that for zooming yeah so if you want to zoom just duplicate the charts uh, and the duplication goes in a bigger panel uh, so that the end user um, has more visibility uh, and and uh, zooms in in terms of color coding you see that I always try to stay with um, only three or four base colors in this case it was black and gray combined with green and very rarely I use a little bit of yellow just to make the reflection as strong as possible on the page thanks for your attention